My name is Clay Claymore. My master brought me here on the surf to cure the internet of retardation and bullshit. My master gave me this text box so that I could speak SPURG! Hey everybody, type in the chat, oh 3 be good the stupid SPURG! Don't you ever dare make a video criticizing me, or I will cry incessantly about your criticism on Twitter. Fuck you, Doodle Tones. Please are advised to my hater, shitty camera quality, video length over 30 minutes, and looking tired as fuck does not a good video make. More advice for my haters. If you're reading from a script, don't make it fucking obvious. I don't bring anything new to the table, Clay. Really? Really now? Fucking really? This is coming from the guy that made two videos on two dead topics, with one of them literally being a dead topic because he's literally fucking dead. This is coming from the guy who has made countless videos on two subjects that are slowly becoming dead topics. And this is coming from the guy who made a video on A-Log, another irrelevant dead topic that was notorious for making videos on Christian back in 2008. And can somebody please tell me the last time A-Log and Chris Chan have been relevant? I'll wait. was for years, then you would be absolutely correct. Clay, if anything, you're an even more edgy version of Leafy. The only difference between you and Leafy is the fact that you're even lazier, and the fact that you put in even less effort when it comes to producing content. With your insistence with lazy text-based commentary, and you feel in the need to jump into as many drama bandwagons as you can. Seriously, you make Leafy look like the Mona Lisa in comparison. And as for me supposedly using scripts to do these rants, well... Yep, you totally got me, Clay. This is the script. This is the script right here that I used to write my rants. You totally got me. I, 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 I write a script. It totally sounds completely natural now, doesn't it? You, you're, you are such a detective, Clay. You really, really, really got me. Nothing gets past you. I don't know where you ever got the idea that I write scripts for these rants, but I'm going to make it abundantly clear. I don't write a script for these rants. In fact, I don't write scripts for the majority of the videos on my channel. Even though, yes, the script that you just saw is from my upcoming video on Disney Animation, and yes, the top 10 YouTube controversies of 2016 will also be scripted, the majority of my channel's output is and will continue to be unscripted, as that's what I just personally prefer. And even if I did use a script, how does that detract from the overall points that I'm making. How does that make my videos somehow less inferior? You do realize that the majority of commentators and even some ranters use scripts for their videos? Here's the thing, just because somebody uses a script for their videos does not make them inferior, and it also doesn't make them superior. Just like how you and me preferring to do our videos unscripted does not make us superior or inferior. No, no one method is better than the other. People just prefer one or the other. And if this were a scripted video, if I really did script my rants, it would sound practically perfect. I don't know if you've watched any of my videos, but I tend to stutter sometimes. I mispronounce words. I make mistakes. There are sometimes long, awkward pauses. And all sorts of other mishaps. That's, those are not the hallmarks of a scripted video. If you actually took the time to look at my channel and watch my videos, you would know that. But that would actually require some semblance of effort on your part. And as we all know, Clay, you're not about effort. Because you're one of the laziest content creators on the internet. Not just in the commentary community, but on the entire freaking internet. And like I said, you make Leafy look like the Mona Lisa. Just saying. This is why you're one of the most hated people in the commentary community, Clay. Because you're an egotistical, arrogant prick who believes he's better than everybody else, who tries to act like he's better than everybody else. You think your shit doesn't stink, you want people to kiss your ass all the time, and you think you're some sort of an internet god. 
when in reality all you do is make shitty internet videos. I mean, your ego is so overinflated that I'm surprised you haven't become the next Kanye West already. And the difference between you and Kanye West is that even though Kanye West is an extremely egotistical person, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that fact, he at least has made good content that the vast majority of the populace enjoys. At least he actually puts out something that's of substance, so his ego is somewhat justified. It's not completely justified, but his egotism is somewhat justified, just based on the fact that he's actually good. You have not produced good content that is even worthy of the ego that you have. What you have is a bad case of unwarranted self-importance, very similar to that of Kablam and the mysterious Mr. Enter. You perceive yourself to be much better than what you actually are. And what you are essentially doing is, is burning bridges and going after anybody just because. You just pick fights with people just because you want to. Just because you're a dick. And nothing, you will, and nothing you say about me will change the fact that you're an absolute dick. And your problem with me, Clay, is not... It's not that my video was too long. It's not that I'm a spurb. And it's not that I supposedly didn't bring anything new to the table. Your problem with me is because I destroyed you. It's because I criticized you. It's because you got destroyed by some 22-year-old autistic animation video game loving loser like myself. And that probably ate away at you. That probably bruised your fragile little ego. And I know, and I know you say you don't like to give a fuck, but let's be honest. You truly cared because look at the reaction. Look at how you responded to my last video on you, Clay. That, those are not the reactions of a man that clearly doesn't give a fuck. I mean, and, and I know it may be hard to swallow, but I'm here to assure you I'm not that important. I'm just some loser that makes rants with a shitty webcam. I'm really not that important. I'm not somebody that anybody should be paying attention to. I'm not somebody that anyone should be getting offended by. But you got offended by me. And that's the truth of it. That's the true truth of it. And you can deny it all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that you're an oversensitive motherfucker. Now, I could spend hours pointing out the endless salt mines, but we have so many of your flaws and inconsistencies to point out throughout the rest of this video, such as... Clay has garnered a pretty notorious reputation for being obsessed with man-children. I'm not joking, he is literally obsessed with man-children. And if you don't believe me, well, I've got the evidence to prove it. So take note, ranters and commentators, if you ever want to make a video about Clay Claymore, this one's for free. This is pretty much what most of his Twitter page consists of, just complaining about these so-called man-children constantly and documenting every little single thing that they do. It doesn't matter if it's O3B Good, The Mysterious Mr. Enter, or RMG Productions. I bet if they sneezed or took a shit, Clay would tweet about it. If you want a deeper sense of how obsessed with these man-children he is, just go on to his Twitter page. It is loaded with tweets that are exactly like this. Now, those tweets I just showcased, those were some of the best ones that I picked out for this video. And if you want a greater sense of his man-child obsession, just go on to his Twitter page, at Clay underscore Claymore, and you'll find dozens of tweets where he documents every little, single thing that these man-children do. It's quite shocking to see how in love with these people he is. But, I'm gonna focus on Clay's obsession with O3 Be Good, specifically. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know the best of O3 Be Good series. In my previous video, I acknowledged that it was one of the only good things Clay has done. Now, when I posted examining Clay Claymore, I listed that he had posted 17 videos on both Mr. Enter and O3B Good. Well, since the publishing of that video in August, he has made three new episodes in the Best of O3B Good series, just out of the blue when it had been on hiatus previously for nine months. Now, I am not at all suggesting that he revived the Best of O3B Good series to get ahead of my video. That was purely a coincidence. But I find it strange that he brought it back now, when it, been, when it had been on hiatus for so long, especially when it's the same copy-paste formula. 
Now I watched the three new episodes in preparation for this video, and I can say with absolute confidence that it's trash. Just complete trash. And it's really the same problem that I highlighted with Clay in my previous video. It's repetitive as hell. I I'm not even kidding here. He literally rehashes, repeats, and regurgitates the exact same points we've heard about O3B Good since the very beginning. It's not anything different. It, it, and I know people like to say Star Wars The Force Awakens is just a rehash of A New Hope. Well, the last three episodes of The Best of O3B Good were essentially just a rehash of the first ten episodes. It's the same problem that I had with Kablam in his video on O3B Good. It was utterly pointless. What does Clay highlight in these three new episodes, you may ask? Well, he calls him a spur, check. You know, he says that he takes things way too seriously, check. He's butthurt, oversensitive, and can't take criticism. And he has delusions of grandeur. We've heard all of this before. It's not anything different. It's not anything new. He's literally just repackaging and regurgitating the same old shit and just spouting it out anew, as if it's suddenly somehow different. And it's surely a shame because I used to like that series. It was good. I, I think 10 episodes was really enough. There was no need to make the other three. They have no reason to exist. They have no reason to even be on YouTube. They have no purpose. They're fucking pointless. Like, it doesn't say anything new, and I find it really hypocritical, Clay, that you called me out for supposedly not bringing anything new to the table, when you didn't bring anything new to the table on your videos about O3B Good. Seriously, it's getting old and tired at this point. And, like, it, it, is, it is quite shocking how much of a hate boner he has for O3B Good. And I want to mention that right now. He hates O3B Good. He has a fucking hate boner. And where the best of O3 Good was previously funny, thought-provoking, and even insightful, now it's just old, boring, tired, and repetitive. It just feels like he's hating on O3B Good just for the sake of O3B Good. Hating on O3B Good. He is beating a dead horse until it's nothing more than a rotting carcass. And it's really, really obvious. Those three episodes were just completely lazy. And Clay, we get it. You hate O3B Good. You think he's a retard. You think he's a spurg. You, you think he's buttered. You think he can't accept criticism. We fucking get it. So please, I implore you, shut the fuck up about O3B Good. Nobody but you gives a shit. Okay? Like, look, if, look, I, I don't like O3B Good either. For, for the same reasons that you don't like him, Clay. But you wouldn't see me making a video on him. Why? Because he's a dead topic. It's pointless. And even if I wanted to, everything that's said, everything that's been said about Blake Good has already been said. So there's nothing new that I could really add to it. But I know why you keep making videos on O3B Good Clay. Because he's the one that brought you to prominence. He's the one that brought you to prominence. He's the reason why you're even remotely popular on YouTube. And let's be honest, if you stopped talking about O3B Good entirely, people wouldn't give a shit about you. People would stop coming to your channel because, let's be honest, the rest of your content has no substance at all. There's nothing great about your content. There's nothing compelling to make people come back time and time again. That's why you have to keep beating uh, the O3B Good dead horse. That's why, you can't, that's why you keep having to reiterate the same fucking points over and over again. And that also goes for the Mysterious Mr. Enter and RNG Productions. You're also just hating on those people just for the sake of hating on them. Now, like, a, now, listen, you can criticize whoever you want, you can make fun of whoever you want, but if you're gonna do it, it has to have a point. It has to have a reason to exist. You can't just do it for the sake of doing it. Because when you do that, you know, you're just repeating yourself. And it's just like, why? And somebody in the comments of my previous video mentioned that he is a reverse man-child. And that's a statement that I agree with wholeheartedly. He is a reverse man-child. I mean, I, 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 I can't tell who's more of a loser. RMG Productions, The Mysterious Mr. Enter, or you, Clay. Or O3B Good. I, I, I really can't fucking tell. And bef before I end this part, I want to say this. 
pretty i want to make this abundantly clear clay you are no better than 03 be good you're a fucking loser too just in a different way and i know you're gonna say but 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 i'm not a loser i'm nothing like that fucking spirit yeah but you are because you be you're becoming the very same thing you th you're becoming the very same thing that you hate you're oversensitive you're butthurt you can't accept criticism you're obsessive you're essentially the internet version of Helga Pataki from Hey Arnold. You are exactly like O3B Good. And I'm pretty sure there's many other people that agree with me in that system, with that sentiment. You are O3B Good 2.0. And the fact that you constantly obsess over every little thing that these man children do makes you even more of a loser than these man children that you constantly criticize. And like Ben Maloney said, you are a loser, you know, and, I, and and you can call me a spurg and a retard all you want, Clay, but the true, the cold hard fact of it is, you are a loser, and honestly, you probably have a secret gay luck that is for these man children. I'm just saying, I'm just saying because the way you obsess over them makes you look like a fucking stalker. It makes you look like a creep. Period. <laughs> I might just do a vid on Philip DeFranco, remembers WMAR video. So, I might just do a vid on Philip DeFranco. Social justice warriors are notorious for railing on other people for complaining about things that they themselves know are problems. Yet, when they get hit by those same problems, they like to play the victim card and get everybody to feel sorry for them. Now, that tweet I just showcased was from Philip DeFranco, who got one of his videos demonetized because he covered the whole SJW Lyft driver thing. And according to the legend, Clay Claymore himself, Philip DeFranco is a douchebag, he has no right to speak out about things that are directly affecting his livelihood and business because he's a YouTube star and he has plenty of money. And apparently, according to this genius, having money totally exonerates you from having problems. What a ridiculously stupid thing to say. That's like saying the Kardashians don't have problems because they're rich and famous and have plenty of money. And that's like saying anybody on planet Earth that has money doesn't have the right to complain about things because they have money. And when you have money, you don't have the right to complain about things because money totally exonerates you from having problems. That is so stupid that it defies any sort of logical comprehension. So apparently, in your eyes, Philip DeFranco is a douchebag. He doesn't have the right to complain about things that are directly affecting his business because he's rich and famous. He's a YouTube star. He has plenty of money. So he doesn't have any real problems because he has money, right? I, I, I mean, it, it, let, let's, 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 let's totally take these things out of the equation. Let's forget about the fact that he relies on YouTube to make a living. Let's forget about the fact that he relies on YouTube to pay his bills and feed his family. And let's forget about the fact that he has multiple channels to run, a business to operate, and multiple employees to pay. Let's forget about all that. He's a douchebag. He, he doesn't have a right to complain because he has a lot of money. And he's a YouTube star. He's just whining because he's not getting that sweet, sweet ad revenue, right? Oh, but... But, but God help you, Lord forbid one of your videos gets taken down, for Lord help you, you Lord help you, you get falsely flagged by RNG Productions, then all of a sudden, everybody needs to feel sorry for you. All of a sudden, you're the victim in all of this. Don't believe me? Take a look at this shit. Tries to upload a video. Alright, I can't upload shit because of Bandaloni and pro man -gayness. So let me get this straight. Philip DeFranco is a douchebag for speaking out against a system that you know is broken, yet when you get affected by that very same broken system, you go and throw a pity party on Twitter and we're somehow all supposed to feel sorry for you? Thanks for enlightening me, Clay. I didn't know that. Now I know the truth. And if you don't know, now you know, nigga. Another hallmark of SJWs is that they'll use a bunch of blanket broad generalizations to try and discredit their detractors, regardless of whether or not it actually makes any sense. Here's a good example of this. Let's say a man criticizes a feminist. Think along the lines of someone like Sargon of Akkad, Andy Worski, or Mr. Repsion. SJWs automatically label them as sexist and misogynistic. 
even though they were just given their honest opinion about something, they're still going to be labeled as that because they criticized and challenged the actions of a woman. And SJWs legitimately, honestly believe that women should be exempt from any form of criticism. And if you criticize a woman, you're sexist and misogynistic. I know, it's an incredibly backwards way of thinking, but they go and criticize men all day, and it's not a problem. Double standards much? Now, I was labeled as something horrible, awful, something so bone-chillingly heartbreaking that it will break the fabric of the entire planet Earth. I was called a hater. No! It wasn't just me, Darth, it was other people like me, the Illogical Reaper, MacBoy with Ducks, the YouTube Dude 101, Schnobs Man, Megaduke TV, Ray Rules 96, Berg Productions, among many others. He, along with Bruce Snoop and Kablam Bandicoot 64, and by the way, Bruce Snoop is the one that designed his cartoon avatar, so if you're ever wondering why they both look so similar, that's why. They, all three of them, had this very backwards mentality, where they legitimately believe that anyone that criticizes them is a hater. Like, like if, if, if anyone criticizes us, then, then, then they must be a hater. It doesn't matter if they make good points, it doesn't matter if what they're saying actually makes sense, they're nothing more than a bunch of stupid fucking haters. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I know this is gonna sound hyperbolic, but I legitimately mean it. This kind of thinking, in my opinion, I believe is leading to the dumbing down of humanity. Listen, just because somebody criticizes you does not make them a hater, and for all the Clays, Bruce Snoops, and Kablams of the world, and anybody else that thinks like them, if you legitimately, honestly believe, even for a second, that somebody criticizing somebody else automatically makes them a hater, then I implore you to take your crash helmet and some applesauce and go all the way down to Bikini Bottom and go have a conversation with Patrick Starr about intelligence. Because I swear to God, the intelligence of people that have this kind of mentality is on the exact same level as that guy. Now I know, now I know what you're thinking. Zion, what's your point? How the hell does this make Clay an SJW hypocrite? Well, if you go onto his Twitter page, he hates on people all the time. He hates literally everything. Now, I'm in no way comparing him to I hate everything, because compared to Clay, I hate everything actually has a reason to exist. It actually has substance and a point and focus which are things that Clay does not have. He doesn't mindlessly hate on things. He gives his opinion, and that's it. Clay does not. And the thing about Clay is that he will just randomly hate on anybody he comes on to con- He will just randomly hate anybody who comes into contact with, but he'll try to pass it off as legitimate, honest criticism. It's not him just being an asshole. It's just honest criticism. So the people that are complaining that they have haters, they don't actually have haters. It's just criticism. Oh, but the minute somebody criticizes him, they're automatically labeled as a hater. So if it's a group, if it's a person, or it's a group of people you don't like, and you hate on them, it, it's just criticism, even though it actually isn't criticism and you're just being an asshole. But when somebody criticizes you, they're a hater, even though it is actually criticism. Not only is it hypocritical, but it's an incredibly silly mentality to have as a content creator. And I know some people are going to say, how is Clay Claymore an SJW? After seeing shit like this, how is he not an SJW? And no, Clay, you're not the cure for retardation and bullshit that you tried to claim yourself to be. If anything, you're a fucking idiot. Now, to be fair, I know people like Bruce Snoop and Kablam are nowhere near as bad as Clay, but the fact that they have the exact same mentality as him is not only incredibly toxic, but it's just backwards as hell. Now, those are my reasons why Clay Claymore is an SJW. You owe me one for this, Slayer Coon. I 
has made this point in his Content Comp video on Leafy, and it's a statement that I agree with wholeheartedly. You can criticize whoever you want, and you can make fun of whoever you want. Now, that's not to say everybody needs to necessarily agree with it, but that's what makes the internet and the world in general such a great place. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression. But that comes with a caveat. You can't be a coward, and you also can't be a pussy. Now, as I highlighted in my last video, Clay will very often make fun of other people's appearances, despite the fact that we've never seen his face or heard his voice. Whether it's Colin Schnaub's man fat, Anna Matt an orange, fedora hat wearing loser, or Lenny Guy 34 a turbo geek. You see, Clay, when you do stuff like that, you're only proving to everybody that you're completely insecure about your own self-image. So you're, you're constantly having to go around making fun of other people's appearances, to compensate for the fact that you probably have a sad, pathetic, miserable existence. And he will combine this insecurity with deflection to try and discredit what his detractors are saying without actually discrediting them. Here's a good example of that. Ah, the brony justification for being an untalented, no-life piece of shit. At least I'm entertaining people and doing what I love instead of wasting my time complaining about people on the web. How far do you have to fall down the internet realms to where Ben the Looney can roast you and make a good point while doing so? Ben was indirectly calling Clay a loser, and what does Clay do? Instead of actually countering and refuting Ben's point, he calls him a brony, and I'm sorry, if you're using brony as an insult in this day and age, you should probably give up on life. He says that he's untalented, and he says that he doesn't have a life. Which is incredibly ironic because this is the man who complains about cartoon fandom and man children constantly, yet he's saying that somebody else doesn't have a life. Because that totally makes sense. This is what is effectively known as an anti insult. And if you don't know what an anti insult is, it's basically where you attack your detractors on a personal level instead of actually refuting the points that they're making. It would be like if I debated with my best friend Eric, aka Kin Raiku, over My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and I said it was the most overrated show in the history of planet Earth. And instead of explaining my reasons as to why I think it's overrated, I just called him a stupid pony-loving faggot throughout the entire thing. And that would be like if I debated with my friend Morgan, aka Nightmare Kagamine, about Naruto, and I said it was the greatest show in the history of the planet Earth, and she thought it was mediocre. And instead of explaining my reasons as to why I thought it was great, I just called her a stupid anime-loving bitch that, have, that has no appreciation for men in orange tracksuits. Do you see how stupid that is? And I gotta tell you, I, I love the anti-insult, because it allows you to make blanket statements to try and discredit what your detractors are saying, instead of actually refuting what they're saying, right? I mean, it's an anomaly. Here's another example of Clay using the anti-insult. And if you know anything about Clay Claymore, he is the master of the anti-insult. Looks like Doodle Tones is a big attention whore. Yep, he fits right into the commentary community. Watched it for two minutes and I gave up. Two minutes, dude? Seriously? Oh dear god, the world really is ending. Oh shit. Well, at least we now all know that you think lasting two minutes is good enough. My nigga, you just got roasted! Yeah! Yeah! He failed to refute any of Doodle Tone's points, resorted to silly personal attacks referring to the fact that she's transgender, and called her an attention order because she dared to make a video criticizing House 920, which is a fantastic video by the way, and if you all want to watch it, link's in the annotation above. Stuff like this really just goes to show you how much of an oversensitive prick Clay really is. I mean, again, I'd like to point out the fact that this is the guy that claims to not give a fuck, yet he gets really buttered when somebody makes a video criticizing him or somebody else that he likes. How pathetic. Now, before we end this video, there's still one more thing that I want to highlight that perfectly points out Clay's stupidity. Now, I'm pretty sure you all know the whole where's my ad revenue debacle. Now, I'm not going to talk about it in depth because that's already been commentated to death. In fact, Megadoo TV made an excellent two-part commentary on the entire thing. And if you want to watch it again, links in the annotation above. All I'll say about that video is that it's absolutely awful. In fact, it's so bad that it melts the chrome off of doorknobs. Let me give you the abridged version. He fails to refute any of Doug's points. You're starting to notice a pattern here. 
And he basically calls him unfunny and untalented throughout the entire thing. But the biggest sin that he commits in that entire video is that he cuts out an entire section in which Alex, aka I Hate Everything, talks about how easily the copyright system on YouTube can be abused by companies and individuals to take down videos that they simply don't like. And the reason he didn't play it is because, quote unquote, he didn't want to listen to him and his fans supposedly whine about how a review of a shit movie that nobody saw got taken down. And since he didn't think it was beneficial enough to play the video, I'm gonna do his job for him and play it for you, so you can get a true sense of what I Ate Everything actually said. I'm gonna play this clip now, because I think it really just goes to show you how little Clay values differing opinions. Roll the footage. Hi, I'm Alex from I Hate Everything. Three days after I released my review of Cool Cat Saves the Kids, a terrible, infamously bad movie, I received a suspicious copyright strike from the director of the movie himself, Derek Savage, who over the course of about a month used this unfair strike to censor and restrict my channel, and even tried to bully an apology out of me in private emails I've since made public. This clueless man, who has shown multiple times that he has about as little understanding of how the fair use law works as he is knowledgeable in competent filmmaking, was given the tools to waste my time and threaten my livelihood purely because he didn't like my negative review of his god-awful movie. Which, by the way, I did actually recommend at the very end of the video, in a so-bad-that-it's-good way. And I wasn't alone, either. It turns out Mr. Savage had been on a copyright-striking rampage, silencing at least two other creators who had a negatively slanted review of his movie. Savage's childish behaviour aside, this highlights how hilariously slanted and weighted against the creator the YouTube copyright strike system is. He didn't have to show any evidence, he didn't have to prove his case or worry about any possible repercussions. He definitely would have lost in court if it had gone there, so once he failed to refute my appeal, the strike's time limit ran out and my channel was eventually restored to normal. It was a colossal waste of time and energy for everyone involved. In a commentary, you're supposed to be unbiased and you showcase both points of view. You let your detractor express their point of view, and then you interject and express your point of view, while simultaneously trying to refute the points that your detractor made. That's how commentaries work! How do you not know how commentaries work? You're a commentator! You should know this! I'm a ranter, and the fact that I have to explain to you how commentaries work is just sad! Dear God! Just explaining your stupidity is slowly dwindling down my IQ points. Now, I could go on and on and on how you're the next Mr. Enter or O3 be good, but honestly, I think the rest of the video did a pretty good job of that for me. So I'm just gonna say this. I normally don't say this very often, but this time I feel like I can say it with absolute confidence and absolutely mean it. Clay, you are Mr. Enter 2.0 and your O3 be good 2.0. Deal with it. And by the way, you're not the realest nigga we'll ever know. In fact, if you have to tell everybody that you're the realest of something, more likely than not, you're probably fake. Anyways, this is Daka Douglas, aka The Unhero, signing out. Deuces, stay frosty and keep it weird. Q and outro sequence now.